Ladies and gents, welcome. Welcome to yet another retrospective marathon event. It is actually July, J July, July, July 1st, um, July 1st, 20, actually, let me move my camera here. It's July 1st, 2021. Boy, I'm not prepared. And we're going to have some fun today because today we're going to be going down memory lane. We're going to be watching back stuff you guys dominated. All right. For this very special event. And the way I'd actually like to start today, okay, is going back to the last retrospective that took place on February 23rd, 2020. All right. So we're talking five months ago. Well, four months ago. And I'm going to show you the origins of this because as you can see, people are super supportive on the stream already today. We already hit the original vest goal. I got the vest on. And we're going to watch the origins. The origins of the vest from the last retrospective event that took place just a few months ago. All right? Pretty cool. Um, see him fool to me. $4.20 is double shame on you. One for Monday and two for not playing the quiet man. Well, there you go. People are very upset. Number one, for, you know, assuming something during my last of us two playthrough. Number two, for playing not playing the quiet man. All right. Let us, to start today's retrospective, do a retrospective of the last retrospective. All right, here we go. Retrospective section starts right now. Let me actually get my volume up so I can hear this because I have like negative levels here. Okay, ready? So this is from February 23rd, 2020, the last retrospective. This is the birth of the vest. Ready? I so, unfortunately. I'm being asked, do I still have this button up shirt I'm wearing in the video? No, I'm sure of that. That got worn out a long time ago. That's actually, if you could, uh, that's a, like a night shirt or a pajama shirt. Yeah, that's like a pajama top. You're supposed to wear pajama pants. That's what that is. That's Before right. Dr. Jekyll, he really hasn't had a mainstream movie hit. There were a couple Dr. Jekyll... You know what I'm realizing now? So I didn't realize this four months ago or three months ago? Four months ago. That I have hair gel in. See that? That's actually hair gel. Back then, that was like ten years ago. I used to put hair gel in my hair every day whenever I was on camera. Uh, I stopped doing that because the hair gel actually caused tons of irritation all over my head. Like, I had nasty eczema on my ear and the back of my neck where the hair gel would touch. So I completely stopped wearing the hair gel because it was actually, like, really detrimental to my skin. But that's why the hair there looks so nice and, like, perfect and not moving. Today you'll notice in my videos and now it moves all over the place. That's because I don't use hair gel anymore. Movies or Mr. Hyde movies over the years. Uh, but unfortunately... Nothing is like a giant blockbuster mainstream hit like Friday the 13th. So really, you have to work with the source material. And the source material, the book of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, as you know, was a story about how a middle-aged doctor walked through a town where men in giant purple and pink coats threw bombs in the middle of the street, completely <laughs> threatening everyone and all the bystanders <laughs> in the entire town. Also how... All the small little children in London carry guns and shoot That's everyone right. on the fly. And how everyone in the town was actually faster than Dr. Jekyll. I mean, we all know that Dr. Jekyll had a leg injury, so obviously he couldn't move very fast. Uh, so really, yeah, I think this is a pretty good accurate representation <laughs> of Dr. Jekyll. And now let's talk a little bit about the Hyde character. I mean, come on. People are saying, do I still I should look for the vest? Oh, my God. I'll go, okay, I'll go look very quickly. I'll go, I know exactly where it would be. It would be in my front closet if I still have it. I don't think I have it, but I'll go check quickly. I'll be right back. I'll check, I swear. All right. Hold so on. what did you guys do when I left? What did everyone do when I left? I left to go look for the vest, and all of you, what were you doing? Were you behaving? Were there people having fights in the chat? Were you wondering? Were you taking bets on whether I'd be able to find the vest or not? Oh, my God! Look at that massive tip! Just kidding. That was a tip from, from February. That wasn't from this stream. <laughs> Atlas Telemon, just cheers. I don't know if the web is ready for three fills. Oh, what we're going to do is every single every single um, retrospective, we're going to watch this again until the whole screen is covered with me on webcam, watching myself on webcam. It's going to be me here. Every corner in the middle, like everywhere, it's going to be fills. Dozens of fills covering this screen. Every time we're going to do this, this will be great. <clears throat> right? So basically, you guys just sat around doing nothing because you told me to go look for the vest, and I went and I looked for the vest, huh? Which is funny, now is this vest has gotten tons of wear because I've been wearing it fairly consistently for the last four months. 
But back then, this had been worn like maybe a dozen times tops. So it was essentially a brand new vest. But now it's kind of like been worn and everything. <laughs> Pretty funny. So what's going on? Took me a while to find it, I guess. It was funny. It was right in my front closet. Where I thought it was. It was, oh my god, there it is. For the first time, guys. There it is. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I, I just couldn't find the vest. <laughs> I couldn't find the vest. All right. I don't know. I don't know where it was. <laughs> it was right there in the closet. It was sitting right there in the closet. I was like, oh, my God. I seriously haven't looked at that thing since I moved here. I've never worn this. I just, it's in the closet. <laughs> Three of me on screen at once. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It was pretty funny to see three of me on screen at once. It's actually disturbing, incredibly disturbing. I think I'm going to have nightmares tonight now. Um, okay. So that was the dawning of the vest. That was where I first found the vest. And since then, now it's become a running meme, right? In fact, we're going to follow this right now. That, that was the start. That's when we found the... That's right, Lice for... Not Lice for Soul. Oh, Super Bad Cat. The legend began on that day. February 23rd, 2020. Mark it on your calendars. That day must be remembered forever. Okay? Now. It continued. Let me get it here. The origin... Well, that's kind of the origin of the Tips Gold gimmick. So basically it was on a random Minecraft stream where people asked me to if i hit the tips goal to give them rewards for it and so i said i would start doing that and then later on on a future minecraft stream that was a week later i hit the tips goal and you guys wanted me to put on the vest and the cowboy hat so what we need to do here is find that so just negative 740 negative sadly <clears throat> i also said if we double the tips goal i'll put the cowboy hat on too but i don't think that's happening either Timbal Slice Cheese said, you're wrong! Oh, Jesus Christ! Scared myself! Fucker. Fucker I, I just jump scared myself with Fucker fucking screaming. Fucker. Like I got hit by a skeleton. You. Holy fuck. Well, now I got bones. So, by the way, so this stream is from March 9th, 2020. So, this was about two and a half weeks after the retrospective had happened. All right. By the way, isn't it funny? I watched one... I seriously watched one video by The Quartering. Um, and now half of the videos in my related videos are by The Quartering now. I'm not... I told you guys about how bad the YouTube algorithm is. I watched one fucking video by The Quartering. One single video. And now my entire YouTube's fucking related is either videos from me or The Quartering. And that's it. YouTube fucking sucks. Alright? But anyway. Um... This was March 9th, so this is about two and a half weeks after the vest streak. Excuse me, after me finding this vest in my closet. And then it was about, I'd say about a week after I had announced that if we hit tips goals, I would start doing celebratory things. And it was on this very stream that you guys said, well, why don't you put on the vest and put on the cowboy hat for those two tips goals? I gotta go to sleep, I guess. <clears throat> okay. Who's Yuri says, well, that means you only watched yourself prior to the quartering. Well, you've got to during, be kidding. Look what's wow. in the town. During the retrospective. Oh, my Look God. Look what's in the town right now. Anyway, let's, let's fast forward ahead a bit. Gentlemen, do you see what I see? Oh, did you see that? Are you kidding me? So, first of all, a dolphin playing golf took me $1.99 and says, do you think YouTube is redeemable as a platform? Yes. But it would mean completely having a change of management and a change of philosophy. That's they correct. They have to become a serious business, which they're not. I'm sorry, they're not. They're a bunch of people who say they're smarter than everyone else. They don't have business mind. They don't take feedback from the, from the people who use the site on a daily basis. The whole thing, the whole management structure would have to be uprooted, kick the fuck out, and get business-minded people in there to change it and make it become efficient, and then YouTube could be a good platform again. That's correct. I agree. This man is very intelligent. Ladies, I don't know who this guy is, but I agree with I agree with this guy wholeheartedly. This guy seems to know what the hell he's talking about. I wish more people would listen to people sure. like this. But I believe I just received an anonymous $170 tip. Wow. And I did. I was so okay. nervous at this point. I was like, dude, that's like a giant tip, and I don't get tips that big, so that's got to be, like, fake, right? And then I went and checked, and it was I'm real. i to confirm this. I want to make sure this is real. 
Because when I get something giant like that, obviously, I want to make sure it's real. Alright. Let me double, double check. I believe it is real. Holy shit, if that is real. Thank you very much to whoever that was. If it is real, let's find out. And confirm. <laughs> it's real. We think it's real. The villagers think it's real. It's real. Well, I'm a man of my word, so hold on a second here, everybody. I told so, you I'm a man of my word. So this is it. This is what the I very first time, do? March 9, 2020, when I put the vest <laughs> on in celebration of you guys helping me hit the tip skull. Get ready. All right. Get ready. First the vest. There it is. And then. <laughs> Where the hell is it? Where is he? Gaffer knocked the cowboy hat down. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, look, there's cat hair. Oh, God. There's cat hair all over my cowboy hat. Oh, <laughs> you Gaffer can actually see it on that webcam, too. Closet, he must have knocked it down. And he's covered in hair. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's covered in hair. So that's right, it was a double goal. I, I basically had a goal of $100 and I doubled it because someone took the 170 bucks. Crazy. Sit the hell down and put the hat on, asshole. Stop fucking bullshitting around. We want to fucking see this. Put the stupid hat on, dick. I said I would do it. I did it, goddammit. So there you go. So it was March 9th, 2020. It was the first day. This was the official start of the vestry. March 9th. Today is uh, July 1st, and the vestry continues. We're up to 161 and counting. Like I said, if we double the tips goal today, I'll count it as 162. Because technically, that's the same amount that I would have raised within two streams during a day. So, that's pretty crazy. That's been, so March, April, May, June. That's been almost four straight months of consistent support with you guys. Thank you. You know, that's awesome that we could go back and now look at these moments and be like, damn, that's like how it started, right? Now, I don't know how long it's going to go. I don't know how much longer it's going to persist. It could end at any moment. In fact, I'll be honest, the last few weeks we had a few streams where it was right down to the nitty-gritty at the end of the stream, and then someone would somehow massively support me, and we would continue. I know it's not going to continue forever, but for those who have been supporting, thank you so much. In particular, I've been telling you guys, this month is going to be a very challenging month for me because this month I have to, no, number one, pay my tax guy a lot of money to retain his services to go to the government and get back my back taxes payment plan a lot of people don't understand how this works in a nutshell i owed back taxes to the federal government and i was on a payment plan for a year where i was paying them on a monthly basis all of a sudden at the beginning of this year they stopped taking my money and i panicked and i sent them money anyway manually and then i contacted my tax guy and was like what the hell's going on and he said oh well you declared bankruptcy and when you declare bankruptcy it completely cancels all agreements you have with anyone like any installment agreements, anything with anyone get basically canceled. And then you have to reaffirm agreements manually in order to have those continue. And it's true. Like all of my, even my, my mortgage, my car loans, everything got shut down. And I had to contact all those places manually and say, no, I intend to keep paying these things. And I continued to do them. So what I need to do this month, sadly, I need to pay a ton of money to my lawyer to go back to the federal government when they reopen for tax processing in like say mid to late July and say, all right, here's what happened. The bankruptcy happened, the stupid payment plan canceled or whatever, but we need Phil to get back on it. He doesn't want to have these back taxes looming over his head. He doesn't want to have insane penalties and shit. So basically, you know, your help the last few months is allowing me to now afford to pay this lawyer to do this work up front. What I'm hoping is that the government doesn't say, oh, you owe us a ton of money before we'll even put you on a payment plan, in which case I'm going to tell them, I don't have it. You know, I've done this before. I've done all these these marathon events and things to try to raise funds to get on the payment plan last year. I get on it, and then I declare bankruptcy, and it cancels the fucking plan, which I didn't know was going to happen. And now I'm in a situation where i got to go through all the work and pay for it again. It's like, this is ridiculous. So I'm just going to tell them, I don't have it. Whatever you think you need to do, you know, whether it's put a lien on my goddamn house or whatever. But what I'm hoping is, what they're going to say is, okay, let's just get you back on the plan. Maybe the plan's going to increase now because you didn't pay all your taxes last year as well. But the plan will get back on a plan that's reasonable and I can afford it. And then everything will be good moving forward. Okay? 
But it's going to be a try. Like this is like the the last hurdle for me. It really is. This this hurdle this month is the last hurdle for me. Once I get past this, and I'm okay I, every month, I'm paying the taxes I owe for this year. I'm paying the back tax plan, right? I'll be good. Like I'll now be able to say, here's my budget for what I pay every month. Maybe I'll be able to say, I have extra money. I can save some money. Have savings again for the first time since I moved here six years ago. Or, oh my God, I can actually improve some stuff. I told you guys some of my plans. What I want to do is get rid of this love seat that's old and worn out. It's a piece of shit. <clears throat> okay? And in place of that, use another chair. Maybe I have a brown chair that I used to have back in Connecticut. I can maybe see if it fits there. Or if not, get another chair. Maybe actually set up a green screen. It's a new thing that that these hip, these hipster streamers are doing. They're putting a green screen behind them. Pretty cool. They're getting rid of the backgrounds, and they're just it's, you know that's pretty unique. I don't think anyone else is doing that. So I want to be at the forefront of technology, and I want to be one of the first people to adopt a green screen setup on my streams. We're gonna break ground here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so that's some of the things I'd like to do this year. Just get rid of that, which I have to pay for. I have to pay for someone to get rid of that shit. Um, and, you know, then get a do chair. Maybe get a green screen set up. That's stuff maybe I'd like to do by the end of the year. We got. I got to get through this month. This month of July. And I'm actually, I, as much as I'm dreading getting bad news. Because my life, my life has been a series of ups and downs like this. Especially since I've been on YouTube. High high, then a low low. Then a high high, then a low low. That's how my life's been like this. Right now, these past few months have been great. Things went really... Even though people tried to ruin my fucking life and make it so that I couldn't get my bankruptcy ruling and all this shit. I got it. And then this positivity over the last, you know, three to four months, hitting the vest streak every day and getting myself out of the rut that I was in. I'm now on a high high. Admittedly, I'm on a high high. My streams are great. Everyone's having so much positivity and having a good time. My brain is now programmed to think that a low low is coming. And I hate that because I don't want that. I want to feel like everything's going to keep being positive. You know, I do. But that's how my life has been for the last, you know, six, seven, eight years is whenever something good happens, something negative has to come to negate it and take it away. Three years ago, I was in a good financial position. And then I found out that I owed all these back taxes to the state of Washington because I've been doing my taxes wrong because my tax, my old tax attorney from Connecticut screwed me over. You know, that's what I mean. <clears throat> you see what I mean? Um, very frustrating, very, very frustrating. Um, and I want to believe the positive. I want to believe that all the support you guys give me over the last few months have got me to a positive point. This month, I'll pay my tax attorney. He'll work with the government back tax plan established. It's reasonable. I can afford it. And now I can move forward positively for the rest of the year and not have to worry about that. But I don't know. Like I'm, I'm actually skeptical that something's going to, you know, screw me over. For what I'm to understand, worst case scenario isn't that bad. Like, a lean on my house wouldn't be the worst possible thing, but well, I'm just waiting for something else. You know, again, I don't like being that. I don't like being cynical. I don't like focusing on negative shit. I want to be a positive person in my life moving forward, but so much shit has happened to me that I just feel something's going to happen. You know, you always get that really fucking stupid feeling. I think what it's going to be, I need to really focus on the positive for a, lo for a long period of time and just have positive things happen to me for a period of time before I can start believing it again. But this year has been great. So thank you guys. I mean, we're June. This year has been great for me and my content. And personally, behind the scenes, things are going good. So thank you guys for all of that and continuing that support. I really do appreciate it. Okay? Lysa for Soul, subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Lysa for Soul. Actually, no, this is Lysa for Soul. This is someone who has a name similar to Lysa for Soul, but it's Lysa for Soul. Oh, boy. We have a possible impersonation here. So thank you for the sub. Lumber Chop Man tipped me twenty dollars that I spaced on my taxes last year. Big mistake. Yeah, it's a big mistake. The government ain't no joke. They want their money. And I was fine. I went through the ropes last year to qualify for a tax plan. I was fine. And then the bankruptcy fucked it up on me. I had no idea that was gonna happen. Um I didn't want my tax plan to be canceled on me, but it got canceled. They stopped taking my money. I was like, what the fuck? And I panicked and I actually paid an extra month and my tax guy was like no, there's no point. The agreement doesn't even exist. So, you know, don't even bother keep paying until the summer when we get the next plan set up. I'm like, okay. Um, Alice Telemann just cheered. He said, bit of a devil's advocate. If you go offline, so if I'm not streaming, and I decide to give you $100, is that a taxable tip? 
or gift from a friend and non-taxable. It is taxable. Every piece of income I get is taxable. I'm an internet personality. The reason that anyone would give me any income out of the blue is because I'm an internet personality. Right now, if I didn't have an established internet presence or persona, if I didn't have a business, if I wasn't a content creator, no one on the street's gonna walk up to me and say, here's $100, okay? If someone literally walked up on the street right now and didn't know who I was and said, here's $100, that could be considered a non-taxable gift. But outside of that, anything that comes through because I'm a content creator, because you know who I am, is a taxable. Every piece of income I have received, I have paid taxes on. Or at least filed taxes saying I owe taxes on it and now I have to pay the back taxes I didn't owe. Okay? I do it right. I do it right. I don't do things the wrong way. I don't know how other streamers and YouTubers do it. That's how I do it. That's probably why, admittedly, I'm in the tax issue I'm in. Because a lot of other people probably don't record, report their income properly. And I do, which is why I owe the taxes that I owe. And everyone else just says, I don't owe anything. No, I do it right. Because I, the last thing I want is 10 years, 15 years down the road, the federal government says, we don't think that you, pay, that you did your taxes right, you know, because we think you have hidden income that you didn't declare. And I'll be like, well, fuck, now I'm screwed, right? No, no, I can't have that happen. You know, I can't. So I have made sure I've reported all my income. <laughs> okay. So now, folks, that's it for the whole vest introduction to this retrospective marathon event. It's now 78 degrees in my office. I'm thinking I should turn on the air conditioner because I'm wearing a vest and I'm getting hot. All right, hold on. Let me do that right now. And then we could get to the next thing. I apologize in advance. I know it's going to be loud. The air conditioner's right behind me. There's nothing I can do. When I'm doing an event like this at the PC, it's going to be loud and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry, guys. Okay? All right. Okay. Are you ready? Let's move on. Let's see what we want to do next. Um. All right. Apparently, this, this video is an epic rage quit. In reality, I, I remember this being a rage quit for me, but I don't remember how it went down. I think we should watch the video. All right. From July 30th, 2012, Mega Man X6 epic rage quit moment. I don't remember this. Oh my God. That is loud. Let's lower that a little bit. God, that was really fucking loud. So this is, wow. Before I even did direct captures, this is quite a long time ago, 2012. Okay. To uh, get over there. Oh my God, seriously? I need to do like a crazy wall jump? After a, a bigger jump like that. If I just do that, I can't make it. Let's try the lower pad. There's another one here, too! Oh my god. I don't remember this at all. I have to kill it. Wow. What is this? I don't remember this at all. At least there are some ropes. Anyone remember this? I don't really remember this. First, the ropes help against these assholes. There's and bugs the that you can't respawn? shoot? This is weird. Do I remember how hard making an X6 was? Not really. I don't really remember this game. I just remember, I remember doing the marathon. Because remember back then, I used to do marathons during the summertime. I used to do like, oh, I'm going to play all the Mega Man games. I'm going to play all the Mega Man X games. I'm going to play a bunch of Spider-Man games. I'm going to play a bunch of Batman games. Because back then, there were no new games during the summertime. And I remember, I'd done this for like three, four years in a row. People liked it. 
And then finally, people said, play Mega Man X. I was like, well, you know, I've only played like maybe three or four of them. Whatever ones were on SNES were the only ones that I'd ever play. And therefore, I don't know anything about them. And by then, back then, I wasn't live streaming. It was just me playing them cold turkey, not knowing anything about the games. So I had no help or guidance. It was just me trying to beat them legit. And I remember by the time I got to like four or five or six, one, I hated it. I was like, these games suck. They don't even feel like Mega Man anymore. Like, it just feels like they, they, they basically turned them into like drivel. Like, what is this right now? Insanely huge energy bar in the right. You can't see my camera's blocking. It's like an energy bar four times bigger than Mega Man's. There's a bunch of fucking bugs flying around. I don't even know what the fuck those are. You know? Like, what is this? This is Mega Man? This is supposed to be Mega Man. It doesn't even look like Mega Man. It's fucking weird. The boss is just a fucking... An, a big red... I don't even know what that is. A fucking Cheerio? Oh a, 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 an old crusty bagel? Full of, like, pustules of green shit on it. Like, what is it supposed to be? They didn't even try. Look at that. What is that? There's no effort put into that. What I did, you see, I... I, I hit you, I'm surrounded by defending dragonflies. Yeah, I used the dragonflies to try to create a barrier to block his shot so I could just shoot him as much as I wanted to. And that didn't even fucking work. Really stupid. Oh my god, this, this is terrible. This game's almost 20 years old, says Derek. I get what Tori says. I remember you said X5 story made no sense. Yeah, exactly, Zelda Minions. What the fuck is that supposed to be? I told you it's like a... <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a big, a big festering onion ring or something. Like, that's a boss. They really ran out of ideas if that's a fucking boss now in Mega Man. This fucking stupid thing. I can't, look, I can't even get lower. What the fuck? Nothing hit me. What happened? Nothing hit me and I died. That's I don't even know what happened, but... Like, to me, like, that's stupid. Like, that's a, that's a boss in the game? How are you supposed to hit the fucking weak points when it... Oh my god, that's terrible. That's really terrible. Uh, no way I'm gonna get out there. Let's try this round. Is this where I rage quit the game? Yeah, I only play for another five minutes, so apparently I give up on this shit. I'm like, fuck this game. I stopped playing it. This is terrible. Oh my god. Oh. This is painful to watch. It's... The game, not my gameplay, the game sucks. This is what's happened to Mega Man. Then they have the Mega Man Zero series. Mega Man Zero is way better than this. You know, Mega Man Zero, I've already played the first two. And I, I started the three. Looks like a strawberry. You think it looks like a strawberry, Derek? I don't know about that. It looks stupid. It's a giant pork rind. I'll tell you what it is. It's shit. Look, I can't even kill it either. Like, yeah, this is... This is fucking shit. The other thing is that's respawning little enemies. But the enemies don't drop any power-ups whatsoever to help you win the fight. Making the enemies completely worthless, because normally in a Mega Man game, if you're respawning enemies, you can farm them for so items. You can't farm these for items this at all, so, so what's the point of them being in the game? This game fucking stinks. A red alien onion ring. It's just, I don't know. Insane health bar. Xander Realm says X6 and X7 are generally considered the low points of the X series for most people. X8 is pretty good, though, and is definitely worth playing if you ever want to try. Well, I might still have the collection. I don't remember if I still have this or not. The problem is I wouldn't be able to play it anymore because this is back when I had a camera pointed at my TV, so I was playing this on a legit PS2 for the collection. 
Now I do direct capture. I don't. I can't do the camera style anymore. So I wouldn't even be able to play this game if I wanted to, unless this is even emulated somewhere. You know what I mean? Like if I can get it on PlayStation Network or so, I can't play this. So. I like the music. I think I've always liked the music of Mega Man. Of course, certain games more than others. But I've always enjoyed the, the music of Mega Man games. Oh, they did? Xenoroam says, don't worry, they did release new X collections for the current system. That's nice to know. Luna, I just did a subscription to Xanderoam. Thank you, Xanderoam. Uh, Luna, congrats to Xanderoam. Shadow the Hedgehog did a 500 bit cheer. Hold on. I'm about to rage quit the game, by the way. So, Zand uh, Shadow the Hedgehog did a 500 bit cheer. He said, My favorite Mega Man X game, X66 ass badass. I love Zero in the game with the ha. <laughs> this is the game that made me quit the series, Shadow the Hedgehog. It is. This is the game I quit. Because I had originally planned on maybe playing the entire collection that summer. And after this game, I was like, I'm not playing this anymore. I basically just completely stopped playing the, the Mega Man games. I had had enough. After this shit. This is... Okay. Oh, fuck! Well, just skip ahead here. <laughs> Completely pointless. Oh, here we go. This is so stupid. I really don't want to play this anymore. This thing has a health bar that's like four times bigger than mine. This has nothing to do with Mega Man, what I'm doing right now. It's right. It's completely pointless. It's stupid. Kill giant fucking red metal balls that shoot green shit at you. What the fuck am I playing? This isn't Mega Man. Uh, this really isn't the... Is, is it Mega Man? And I should try it again. Me? I'm absolutely right. Eight years later, I'm still right. That is terrible. I don't think there's any way to get up there. Inafune apparently wanted X5 to be the last one, but Capcom wanted more money, and that's why they made this piece of donkey shit. Makes sense. Sounds like Capcom to me. Sounds like the Capcom I know. <clears throat> I don't think. Yeah, I don't think you can make it up there. Hello, Yoshino Lover. Good to see you today. This is the, by far the worst Mega Man game I've ever played in my life. You've got one stage that's completely randomly generated and uninspired. You've got another stage that all you're doing is fighting giant metal fucking red balls. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this is not Mega Man. This is nothing like Mega Man. The series went in a completely wrong direction. I'm not having any fun whatsoever. This fucking sucks. I quit. I'm not playing this shit. And that was it. Apparently, I, I completely quit. I never went back to it. Yeah, look, there's X5. X6 incomplete. X2. Yeah. I never went. And this, one made, this is how you don't play, of course. You're a fucking idiot. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and Ninja Destroys Alinity. Sounds like a great video. Fucking don't watch that shit. Okay. Well. That was a rage quit. One of my old school rage quits. Oh, you know what? So someone had recommended to me. They said, Phil, you should watch one of your old school unboxing videos. Just in its entirety. And here's why. Because back in the day, unboxing videos were amazing. Because I would buy a new game. Alright? And you would open the game and there would be so much stuff inside of it. It would be like a half an hour video sometimes. Because there was so much to, to look at and explore back in the day. 
in in games when you bought them these physical copies right oh my just look at this this is the end of the video look at all the shit that came with prototype 2 right so let's do that let's let's just watch for the for oh my god so this is cool we're gonna see the relic that is machinima it doesn't exist anymore company went out of fucking business bunch of idiots but anyway <clears throat> let's uh let's actually watch this and see what kind of an unboxing it used to be when i used to do these okay cm fool just the dollar 30 says don't play Mega Man x6 it will make stop the marathon it'll make stop the marathon make stop okay we're gonna do a, little, a big variety of stuff today, guys. So don't worry. All right, here we go. <clears throat> oh, I used to have the intro. Remember this shit? I forgot I used to do this. I forgot I used to have a fucking introduction to my release day unboxing. This is actually kind of cool. Dude, the Duke Nukem thing. Yeah. Dang it. Here we go. That's cool. Oh my god, on live. It's the on live. And that was the one Dead Space 2, like, the collector's edition thing was broken when I opened it. Oh my god. See, that was cool. That was a cool throwback to see the old intros I used to do and shit. Last Rambo Cheer, you said you should do a video on the PS Vita unboxing. A lot of people criticized for ranting for a long time before unboxing it. Well, we're just going to do this for now. Maybe we can do other unboxings later. All right, my old setup where I used to have stuff on my, on the countertop that that Connecticut condo, all the you know, statues and stuff. So this is from April twenty fourth, twenty twelve, over eight years ago. All right, fair enough. Let's see how it goes. We already watched the Final Fantasy unboxing V. What's going on, everyone? Dark side. CM Fool to me, Dollar Dirty says, no, it will make you stop the Mega Man Marathon. Oh, I see what you're saying. CM Fool is warning me that over eight years ago, I should not play Mega Man X6 because it'll cancel the Mega Man Marathon because <laughs> I'll rage quit it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Phil here, and welcome to the first release day unboxing in something like over a month. Hmm. There have been no major retail releases for the past month, and I know it's been kind of a downtime. And uh, so I do want to thank everyone who's kind of hung in there with me and bared with it. And uh, a lot of people I know are hyped for this week. Finally, some new retail releases. We're getting pumped for them. So thank you for that. I want to apologize in advance. The uh, lawn crew is here. We've got Jolt Cola in the background over here. I used to drink Jolt Cola as an energy drink when I gamed back then. Bottles of water, of course, to hydrate. I don't know what that is. It looks like maybe Gatorade or something. Air freshener. I'm just trying to pick things out here that I used to do. <clears throat> that is my old calendar that I used to have on my kitchen wall where I write all the game releases on it. I didn't, I kept with that practice every single year until 2020. This year, I don't have a calendar on my wall. My wall is bare over here on the office, but I always used to have a calendar up until this year. Here at my condo, mowing the lawn outside, doing landscaping, so you're probably going to hear people mowing the lawn. By the way, can we please have the mods... Take an eye at the stream chat. There's people in there saying disgusting stuff. And I don't want to have to stop my stream constantly to moderate. I would ask. I know there's a few mods here. Please give a look. Right now, I'm staring at someone insulting my wife. It would be nice if someone could take care of that rather than me. Thank you, please. Someone. Anyone? Hello? Hello? McFly? Hello? Bueller? 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 <laughs> Is no one here? There were mods earlier. I know for a fact there were mods here earlier. <clears throat> oh my god. Do I, I really have to stop my whole fucking stream to do this myself. Well, everyone, hold on.
Actually, no, I can't find it. Yeah, I can't find it now. Well, I guess I'll have to keep an eye on chat myself. Anyway, Spawn Killer took me a dollar thirty-six. Can we watch NEC Car Ride from the King of Hate? All right, guys, please don't send me random suggestions right now. Right now, we are watching stuff that is established that people have already, uh, stuff we've already nominated. We're not taking open suggestions right now. I know people are eager to say, "Oh, this is my favorite." Do this, do that. We're gonna do that later. Right now, I'm going to get through a big list of stuff that people nominated ahead of time. That's why I keep telling you guys it makes sense to nominate ahead of time because we do this stuff first, okay? So, thank you for your tip, Spawn Killer. And Samson tipped me $1.50. He says, what's the red statue of? If you mean the statue to the left, that is a Crimson Guard. That is part of a Cobra Commander Diorama G.I. Joe statue that I used to have. Okay? That's what that is. You can't see the rest of it, but that's a Crimson Guard right there. All right. Let's continue now. Even back then, I had problems with retail landscapers. Retail boxing. I am excited. Listen. Today we have one Ooh. retail release, Prototype 2. And this is the direct sequel to Prototype oh. from 2009. The game where some kind of a virus is unleashed on New York. Alex Mercer That's ends right. up getting infected with it. And uh, he's the main protagonist of that game where he goes around New York fighting off these Black Watch commandos but also fighting the mutated baddies of the game. Um, it was interesting because, if, remember, if I remember correctly, there was both Infamous 1 and Prototype in the same year, and they were both open-world sandbox games. At that time, a lot of sandbox-style games were coming out for that generation of console, and a lot of people compared those two games head-to-head. -head. And then people were very hyped for the sequels, and Prototype 2 took, like, I think it took longer. I'm trying to remember when Infamous 2 came out. But I remember this game coming out, and I thought it was all right. Like, the gameplay was good, but I didn't feel like it really advanced the plot in the right direction. Like, I think that it ended up kind of being underwhelming, if I remember correctly. It's still a decent game, but it wasn't, like, really super fun. And basically, using some pretty unique skill sets, being able to uh, absorb uh, the powers of certain people and then either look exactly like them or absorb their abilities. And uh, at right. the time, the game... That was kind of uh, polarizing. A lot of people liked it, a lot of people didn't. I was part of the group of people who liked it, but I think that a similar open-world game that had kind of oh. come out that year was Infamous. Wow. kind of overshadowed prototype. A lot of people complained that about the second half of the game, the game, the game got boring, repetitive, and had some uh, annoying game bugs. I never experienced any of these game bugs, so maybe for me, I just lucked out, but uh, and that's a rare occurrence for me because usually I experience every fucking game bug ever in any game. But anyway, uh, I really liked Prototype One, and so three. Drink Col Coca Cola says Infamous Two was 2011, so this game took a little bit longer to come out. I remember one of the weird things about this game was that you're not Alex Mercer anymore; you're someone else who hates Alex Mercer because Alex Mercer, I believe, killed one of your family members in the first game and absorbed them. So you're trying to get revenge. Three years in the making, we've got Prototype 2. Now this game follows a character called Heller. Now this is supposed to be some guy who somehow was affected by the actions of... I should just let myself talk from the past and stop talking over myself because I'm saying the same shit. Alex Mercer in Prototype 1. And I guess he has a tragic backstory, which we'll find out about in the playthrough. But I think his whole goal in this game is to find Alex Mercer and fight him and kill him. So this is going to be interesting. Taking the protagonist from one game and turning him into the... I hear like a seagull. Do you hear that shit? I hear like a seagull out in the background. I must have my windows open. There must have been birds in the backyard. I hear like 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 a seagull talking. <laughs> iPopperino. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you, iPopperino, for the, for the subscription. Biometry says, you know, it's interesting. You did a short podcast before every video back then, too, just like your pre-streams today. Ten minutes talking about random stuff before you actually do the unboxing. Very avant-garde. The antagonist in the sequel doesn't happen a lot though, these days, especially with video games, and I'm interested to see how they're going to do this, okay? But anyway, we're here for an unboxing. So this is Prototype 2 Black... Yeah, I hear, I hear like a seagull. I don't live near the water, and can I get... I nearly near any water. Where the fuck is that seagull sound effect coming collector's from? Collector's Edition for the Xbox 360. And as you can see, it's got like a metallic shiny cover. We'll turn it to the back here. <clears throat> so what does it come with? It comes with the Ravnet Edition content. This was cool because when I did these unboxings, I would have the camera on the tripod right there. 
So it was like I'd be reading the box like around the camera and stuff. Like this is really very, very. Uh, there was no professionalism to this. It was just me always just doing shit for fun and dicking around. But people loved these videos. Just, just, okay, this is 2012. This was I was still pretty popular on YouTube at this point. It wasn't until like 2013, 2014 I started to see a big decline. 52,000 views on a simple unboxing video. So this video, no exaggeration, this video alone probably made me anywhere between $100 to $200. Just this fucking video. <laughs> the video alone paid for the game. And that's why I was able to get the collector's editions that had a bunch of junk in them that I didn't care about and I used to sold it all or I gave it away or whatever. Because it didn't matter. The, the the unboxing video paid for the game. And then the playthrough was insane profit. That's how crazy profitable YouTube was back in the day. You know? Alright. Let's continue on. She says includes access code to unlock a massive in-game content package of over 55 events, challenges, and exclusive rewards. Comes with the exclusive Prototype 2 hardbound art book. Dark Horse Digital Comic, Prototype 2 The Labyrinth, Official Prototype 2 Soundtrack CD, Downloadable Content Pack Colossal Mayhem Voucher Code, and Prototype 2 a Merchandise Store Voucher. Well, let me tell you right off the bat, reading some of that, I know that there's a couple things there that I'm probably not going to use, including the digital comic and including this discount code if you want to actually buy Prototype 2 merchandise. And we'll talk uh -huh. a little bit about that when we get to that, but... Uh, Basically, I'm going to be giving away a couple codes in this unboxing. I don't all often do this, but oh. I know there's some codes I'm not... I forgot about that. That sometimes if I would get codes during an unboxing that I knew I didn't care about, I would give them away live in the video, so whoever watched the video first would actually get the code. That was, I forgot about that. That's kind of neat. I'm not going to be using based off of this, and therefore I say, what the hell? Give them away in the unboxing video. You know what I mean? All right, so... <clears throat> well, there's another way to get back to my fans, so... Prototype 2 Blackwatch Collector's Edition. Zoop. And as you can see, it says Blackwatch Sensitive Material Classified in the corner up there. Blackwatch. Nothing on the back. So let's open this sucker up. <clears throat> okay. So what we've got here... Before I even comment on it, like, just look at the presentation, right? A nice slip case. You open up this nice fancy-looking box. You've got... A nice art book. You've got another steel book case inside of the case with beautiful artwork on it. This is what, why people used to go out and buy the games. You know? And you would even drop a few. Like, this one probably is the collector's edition. This one probably cost 15 extra dollars or something on top of the price of the normal game. But you would get this experience. You would become immersed in a new release back then. It wasn't, oh, some guy played this game entirely on the internet two weeks ago and everything was spoiled. It was like, you go out on release day... You get the game, you come home with all the supplementary materials and content. Play the game for a few hours, take a break. Now you're reading through the art book. Now you're looking at the cool, the collectibles, the case. Maybe there's some digital stuff, downloadable stuff. Like this one had a comic book and stuff you could read. So this game would become immersive for days and days, right? That's how it was back then when you bought a physical copy. Today, you buy a physical copy. There's nothing inside of it at all. You might as well download it digitally because when you go home, you still have to install that game on your fucking your console and download all the day one patches and updates that weren't on the disc. So there's really no point in you even buying the physical disc to begin with. By the way, there's no hype anymore because someone already beat the game two weeks ago and everyone knows the whole plot. That's the difference between unboxings back in the day and today where there's like everything's ruined by these horrible practices of doing everything early is a two-sided case on the left-hand side. Looks like we've got an art book, which won't come out. What the? Dogs like Jake says, I just looked to my left. I literally have this collector's edition sitting next to me. What the heck? Well, that's kind of cool that you kept it around that long. You're pretty tight. I gave all these away. Over the years, I used to do the, the giveaways I would do near the end of the year. So over the course of the year, I would buy all the collector's editions. And then in the end of the year, for two, three months, once a week, I would give away a collector's edition to a viewer. So all the shit that I bought, I ended up giving away. I don't have any of it anymore. Pretty nice prototype 2 behind it. Prototype 2 art book. From Radical Entertainment Dudes. <laughs> I'm sure they still exist. The art of prototype 2. We've got character models. We've got... Stage concept design. Art. Yeah, Steve Design Concept Art. Yeah, Steve Design Concept Art. We've got enemies, enemies of designs. designs. All that kind of stuff. Okay? 
So it's a typical art book. See, that's, that's what you neat. would expect from an art book. Then we've got this side. We've got a couple things. We've got, whoa. Vouchers, the soundtrack CD, which we'll take a look at, and the actual game. So let's look at the game first. An actual first soundtrack two. CD. A CD? What's that? Again, shiny metallic cover. On the back, some more art of Helen. That's cool, dude. I like that metallic. box. See? It is just a cardboard slipcase. So oh. Slip that off. Oh. Now I'm now that would disappoint me. I thought that was a metallic with a steel case. It wasn't. It was just a stupid slip case. The slip case looks nice, but that's kind of lame. <laughs> that's a big so swish right Go there. Unleash godlike powers. You are Sergeant James Heller. <laughs> a devastating viral outbreak transformed you into a powerful shape shifting prototype. Halt, kill, and consume your way across New York Zero to take revenge on the man who destroyed your family, Alex Mercer. Okay? So, really, is you seeking revenge on Alex Mercer for somehow he inadvertently, or maybe he purposely hurt your family? You don't know yet because we haven't played the game. So, prototype two, we've got. The game disc, we've got the instruction booklet. Now, on the back of the instruction booklet is a code, which I'm not going to show you. So you might notice I'm already talking about what's in it. So a lot of the times back then, when I first started doing unboxings, I did it cold, meaning I had no idea what was inside the box or anything, okay? And that's cool and all, but what ends up happening is that there's something in there that maybe, number one, is inappropriate, or number two... Um, you're not planning on being in there, like, say, a download code. It could ruin, like, a lot of stuff. And so what I ended up doing is I started opening them up early to know exactly what was inside. Now, in reality, I didn't have to do that. In reality, I could have just not uploaded the video and entered the codes first, but I don't know. I guess I got paranoid that, like, if I if I filmed the code and I didn't want to give it away or whatever, that would fuck stuff up. I don't know. It's stupid, I know. It doesn't make sense. Like, I could have easily just entered all the codes first, then uploaded the video so the codes were invalid. But I started. Oh, I actually started like opening the boxes early, in there to know what was in them. So that's why I didn't take any plastic off the box or anything. Well, I can show you. It says here, ha ha. Okay, a lot fifty-five awesome Radnet content items, such as events, challenges, and themed blah blah blah. So that's the Radnet code that you get. Here's the actual Radnet instruction bro. booklet. Black An instruction white, book. I can't believe explains it. Explains the HUD and the controls. Explains the map screen. There is a free roam mode in this game, according to this. That's nice, okay? And that's it. And I think the probably the reason that there is a free roam mode is because in Prototype 1, once you beat the game, there was not. The game just ended, and a lot of people complained. Oh, man, I would have liked to go back and do all the stuff that I missed, you know, in the, in the, the campaign of the game after the story's over, and the game did not allow you to do that. So I think, uh, you know, listening to fan feedback being that it's an open world style game and usually that's kind of typical for open world style games they said okay well listen we'll allow you to go back and you know do more content if i'm still hearing birds are you guys hearing that so this is interesting to me because i never back in the day used headphones on anything so even when i watch my own videos back i would play them through speakers and i've noticed now that i wear headphones over speakers i hear things that i didn't used to hear i swear to god i hear birds in this video right where the fuck are these birds? <laughs> this is very odd. If you would like, okay? So what else do we have? We've got the soundtrack CD, which features 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 different tracks from the game. Okay, that's pretty neat. Of course, I haven't heard the music yet, so I don't know if it's any good, but that's nice. And then... Last but not least, we've got our voucher codes, okay? Ah. So now let me take a look at this, and I'll see what voucher codes I'm actually going to give away in this video. Yeah, there were so many of these back in the day. When you did an unboxing, there'd be always a voucher in the box that has, like, ten codes on it. It wouldn't be for, like, pre-order DLC, you know, in-game items. Sometimes it would be, like, downloadable webcomic and shit. And if I didn't care about it, I would give it away. <clears throat> All right? Well, this first one I could definitely give away. So get ready. If you would like the f digital comic of Prototype 2, which I'm assuming is going to give you some extra backstory, okay? Here we go. Wait a minute. That's my floor. That's a squeaky spot on my floor. I keep stepping on it, and now you can hear it. It sounds like wood creaking. That's what it is. There's a squeaky board in the floor. Bam. 
that's it, okay? And basically it says, go to digital.darkhorse.com slash prototype2comic and you enter that code and you can download the digital comic <laughs> of Prototype 2 completely for free. So congratulations to whoever it is that just redeemed that code and won that. Good for you. I wonder if, I, if anyone actually did. You would think they did back then. Back then I got so much viewership. There's also a code here for the, the first DLC pack for the game. It's called Colossal Mayhem, okay? It's supposed to give you a rocket launcher and a couple other things. Now here's where I have something to say. This uh -oh. DLC is uh -oh. not valid until May 8th, 2012. So two weeks from today. In two weeks <laughs> from today, you can get this DLC pack that has all these new weapons. That is kind of stupid. I guess with the, back then they were assuming it would take you two weeks to beat the game and then you could get new content, but don't you just want that at launch? That's kind of stupid. Newsflash. If you bought the game today, you're going to beat it before two weeks from today. So what is the purpose of having this DLC pack be staggered two weeks? And I can actually answer this question. The reason is they knew that they saw the backlash with the DLC packs recently, the day one DLCs, okay? Look at Mass Effect 3. Look at any fucking Capcom game that's come out in the past year. Mm -hmm. They all have these day one DLCs, and there's massive fan backlash. How dare you? This is content that was designed during the, the, you know, uh, the development of the normal game. Why wouldn't you just give it to us? So this is their excuse. They're going to say, oh, well, we're releasing it two weeks later, and you can either buy the collector's edition or you can buy this content by yourself. By the way, I saw a voucher for this content at GameStop. It costs five bucks. Five dollars for a couple weapons and maybe an ability? <laughs> That's kind of pricey. So I have this DLC pack. I'm not, I'm not giving that away at this point. I may give it away in the future. Like, let's say in two weeks, I have no desire to go back to the game. So in reality, thinking about this now eight years later, I have a different theory. I think that at this point, this was a big time of, of ch uh, change for games. And eight years ago... What a lot of people would do is they would trade games in very frequently. And then a lot of people would wait. Like, instead of, I don't want, I'll play Prototype 2 in two, three weeks when it's used for like $20 cheaper, right? So I think they tried to do with this DLC, they wanted you to either like buy the collector's edition or whatever. And then they wanted you to hold on to the game and not trade it in so you could check out what that content was a few weeks later, okay? Um, I don't think anyone did. Like, if you beat this game in two weeks, you're going to hold it and not get better trade-in value in order to just use a few new weapons and an ability or something? Like, that doesn't even make sense. So, I don't know why they did that in reality, but I think that might have been their reasoning, okay? I try to prevent you from trading it in right away. I may actually give this code away. So, more on that as we approach. But the last code here, 20% off your entire purchase from the Prototype 2 Merchandise Store. A Prototype so 2 Merchandise thing Store. first is I am going to give this code <clears> away. So if you like Prototype 2 and you want to get 20% off, you want to go buy some merch, here's your code. Wow. Okay. So congratulations on that. That's at prototypegame.com slash store. Okay. However, here's what I have to say about this. So here's some of the merch they're showing you. Now, I know this personally simply because this year we launched Project 7. Oh, man. And since the launch of Project 7, we launched a line of T-shirts. Dated reference. One showing off, you know, the Project 7 logo and myself, Johnny Rambo and Howard. The other shirt showing off Death Face, our, our villainous character from the series. And gratuitous we plug there for the series. To MAGFest, and unfortunately, nobody at MAGFest knew what the hell Project 7 was for the most part. And we sold very few shirts, okay? That's correct. Since then... We've released both episode two and three of Project Seven, which were both smash hits. Everyone loves them. smash hits. There was only four episodes of the series, by the way. Them, okay. We sold almost no shirts. Like I'm not trying to complain. <laughs> but we bought a hundred shirts. I'm not even lying. We bought a hundred Project Seven shirts, uh, anticipating that there would be some kind of demand for them, and no one bought them. Okay, like they're just sitting there. So the merchandise business is a tough business. I mean, I would think it is. At least back then it was. I think what happened was a lot of places... You couldn't really make great shirts back then. You know what I mean? Like today, you can go to Teespring, you can go to another business. There's no upfront cost. And you can make pretty damn good t-shirts in a wide variety of colors. Back then you couldn't do that. We're talking eight years ago. These places didn't even exist. And all you could do if you wanted to make a shirt for a reasonable price was make like a white shirt 
with like a low quality print. Like those Project Seven shirts were not great. They were rough. Okay, they were. They were rough. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why no one really wanted them. They didn't necessarily like the designs. And they also knew that I was making money on it. It wasn't like, um, oh, Phil's an up and coming YouTuber and he really needs the help. So go out there and buy a Project Seven shirt. It wasn't like that. People knew that I was making insanely good money on YouTube. I didn't really need the support, so it wasn't like this is a way to support Phil was to buy a shirt. You know what I mean? In reality, the people who mostly bought those shirts were people who met me at a convention, and they wanted a piece of merchandise that I could sign as a memorabilia that they could keep. That was really primarily how I sold those shirts. Um, in reality, later on in 2012, we went to a couple conventions and actually sold a bunch of shirts. But I think the point I was making here was it didn't seem at this point in time that there was a lot of demand for that kind of thing. But in reality, it was probably just because the shirts didn't look very good. <laughs> it's a hard sell. You have to try to convince someone not only to watch whatever it is that the merchandise is for or play whatever the merchandise is for, in this case, the game, but then like it enough that they're going to drop even more money on an additional purchase. And in this case, look at this. They've got t-shirts. They've got sweat sweatshirt. This is, this is just funny to me because when I made my merch, or if, if, let's say a content creator makes merch, that's supposed to be representative of the content creator. You're supporting the content creator. You know, it could be for a series the content creator has done or whatever. This is just one game. Like, how many people played Prototype 2 and were like, wow, that game was so outstanding that I'm going to go out and I'll buy shirts and hoodies of Prototype 2, right? Probably few and far between. You know, I could see if this was an IP that was like Assassin's Creed where there's 14 games and people wear a hoodie that looks like the Assassin outfit or whatever. You know what I mean? A Call of Duty merch. That makes sense. Prototype 2, two games in the series... Who's going to go out and buy a shirt or buy a hoodie themed to that? Did they actually think that this was going to be, like, profitable? <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of weird. Hoodies. But I know for a fact, from my personal experience, it's actually very expensive to make these kind of custom t-shirts and stuff. It was. Like, those Project 7 shirts, no lie, I probably forwarded about anywhere from 11 to $15 per shirt just to sell them at, like, a $20 price point. While Teespring, I forward nothing. Teespring does all the production costs themselves. So you're talking a really large upfront investment of money in the expectation that you're going to earn the money back, and I didn't even earn a dollar back. I spent way more than I ever made on those shirts. So all I have to say is Activision, being the publisher, probably dropped a significant amount of money into the merchandise for this game in anticipation that the game would be a hit and they would sell some merch. I, you know, I can only hope that the game doesn't blow and, you know, they actually make some money off of it because now that I'm in the same business, I know how rough it is. I've got... What did I use instead of Teespring back then? Because Teespring didn't exist eight years ago like this. It does today. Um, there was a few places you could go. You could go to a place called Cafe Press. But Cafe Press, I the shirts weren't great um, at all. I wanted to go somewhere where you could get a higher quality and you could make a bunch of shirts at once. So I could have the shirts physically for an event. And I went to Vista Print. Vista Print, I assume they still exist, is a place that primarily used to make stationery and business cards. But they started doing a merchandise business of t-shirts and stuff. So I up front bought like 100 Project 7 t-shirts with my own money um, in the hopes of selling these at conventions and the like from this Vista Print website. That's who I used. 80-something t-shirts sitting in a box that probably are never going to be sold. I mean, not that I'm not going to take them to too many games and other conventions like that with me, but probably never going to be sold. They should be sitting around. And uh, I joke about this with Rambo all the time. I say, gee, I guess I our do. children are going to be growing up and they're going to have a wardrobe of exclusively Project 7 shirts. And so we can start them off in the smalls. And then as they grow bigger, we can give them the mediums and then the larges. <laughs> and then when they ask us why, we say, well, just shut up and wear the shirt. It's free. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, this is a big thing. You know what I mean? To, to actually have a... So I got to ask, whatever happened to the shirts? So eventually, later on that year, we went to more conventions and did sell some shirts. I'd say we probably sold maybe about 30 to 40 shirts total by the end of Project 7's run. And then when Project 7 got canceled, no one wanted the shirts anymore. Years later, I moved out here... I started doing the shirts as an incentive for patron pledges. Um, and if I remember correctly, maybe 10, 20 people did that. And it ended up costing me more to ship the shirts 
than what I was making. Like people would pledge twenty dollars to earn a t-shirt and I would sign it or whatever. And then it would cost me twenty five to thirty dollars to ship them the shirt because a lot of my fans were international. So I ended up losing money on it. So eventually I had a bunch of shirts left over and I donated them. I just brought them to like Goodwill and I just said, take these shirts. They were like, what are these? Who cares? Take them and, you know. So out there, there's some kids probably wearing Project 7 shirts of Death Face flipping people off like this. Walking this, you know, they don't know what it is. And there's like Death Face on their shirt doing this. <laughs> okay. The entire line of merchandise based off of a game that's just coming out. That's a huge gamble. And I was surprised, I was honestly surprised to see a merchandise code like this inside the collector's edition of the game because I know that's a significant amount of investment into the game, hoping that the game's going to be a success and people will like it so much they're going to want to go buy some of the merch. So anyway, that's it. That is the unboxing of the Blacklight Edition, not Blacklight, the Black Watch Edition of Prototype 2. I hope you enjoyed it, <clears throat> and uh, I will be playing Prototype 2 today. On my, you know, my gaming. All right, I guess that's enough of that. I'm probably just gonna gab about my schedule and shit. That's what I used to do. I would use the end of those videos talking about my schedule. Timo Slice Chase, what would you do if you seen someone around Seattle wearing the shirt? I would laugh. I would laugh hysterically that someone still has one. <laughs> okay. Um. What time is it? Okay, we can keep going here. That's good.